going to bike 184 miles in two days. Before we left that day, I had to first go to work. At work, I was checking out my bike before leaving in our bike shop and discovered that my shifter cable had corroded and needed to do an emergency change on that so I could at least shift while on the trail. That probably set us back about an hour. We didn't make it to our meetup point until well after 9.30 and we probably left there around 10.45 for a five hour drive. Check it. I want to break someone's car. Oh no, this is tight for me. Yeah, we go down. Eh? Yep. Oh, this bike this is so tight, bro. It's so tight. It's solid. Eric, you got the keys? I got the keys. The keys. Uh, I've got my bike. My bike. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Yours is that. Probably the heaviest, so. How much does that thing cost you? This is actually not, yeah, not much. It was, it was not garage sale. drove through the night and actually slept in the parking lot to the Marriott. We only got about four hours of sleep though. We woke up the next morning, drove into town for breakfast at Chick-fil-A, and then turned back around to head back to the trail where we would start. Right off the rack I got a flat tire. After inspecting a little bit, it looked like some glass had made it into the tube somehow. I'm not sure if that happened before or after I put the bike on the ground. Either way, I was down one of my only two spares. There was a bike shop nearby we were hoping to go and replenish, but they had limited hours due to the off season.
ground was a lot softer than we had expected and planned on, and the heavy racks on the back made it feel like we were digging through sand as we paddled along. When we were planning, the weather had said it was going to be about 50 degrees, and that had dropped to about 30 by the time we were there, and snow flurries began as soon as we started on the trail. We were also facing a big winter storm that had blown in to the north that was causing about 50 mile an hour wind gusts that were not in our favor. Next we arrived in Pawpaw, West Virginia. It's just a tiny town right off the trail, but we knew that they would have a gas station or something that we could get food and some more water. Normally each campsite that you pass has a water pump that you can use to refill your water with. Uh, sadly because of winter and a pipe busting somewhere along the trail, all of those were closed for the time being. This was the first gas station we saw, so we pulled in to stop for lunch. Inside, they only took cash for some reason, so I decided to stick with my freeze-dried meal that I had planned on eating while the others took their chances with the chili cheese dogs. After lunch we made it to the next step in our journey, the Pawpaw Tunnel. We found out later that there was actually a detour that we should have taken but we didn't. That's because on the other side of the tunnel there's danger of rock slides so they have it shut down for maintenance. Before heading out always check the park website. They'll have any recent closures or detours that you should be aware of before you head out on your journey. Day one dragged on and we didn't make it nearly as far as we had hoped. We were hoping to make it about 100 miles within the first day, but probably actually only went about 40-45. With this shot you can kind of see what we were up against though and what was slowing us down. Not only was the weather a little bit crazier than we had expected, but about every mile or so there's probably three trees that we'd have to stop and climb over. With it being so early in spring, none of the volunteers that normally come out to clear the path had been able to do so yet. At this point, it was already almost 9 o'clock, so we figured it was more important for us to just make it to the next campsite, get set up and eat, and get some good rest so that we can continue on in the morning. <laughs> 